unit that's on top of the camera. You following me? Yep. So I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. So, um, so I'm going to leave it there where, where, where I want it to there. Since it's on 1A, as long as it's on 1, we're okay. They're going to flash together. But the reason why I put that one on B is because I want to be able to adjust it separate from this one. So if I want it more powerful, less powerful, that kind of thing. You got me? Yep. Yeah? Okay. One with an umbrella and then one without an umbrella and then I'll shoot through the umbrella, right? So I'll shoot through it and then I'll have the light reflect. You'll see in a minute. All right, so in case it rains. <laughs> so um, you'll see over here, it's on channel A, group A, right? Group A. Everything's at zero over there, which means that it's going to be... <laughs> Well, just in case that someone can see it. Just in case it rains. Just in case. Or she doesn't yeah. want any sun on her head. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's there. And then you'll see it's on TTL right there. The mode is on uh -huh. TTL, which is different than the one in the studio. Now, here's one more thing. I keep going to these off things, but it's true. The one, in, this will also work in the studio. So the, this controller will also work in the studio. The other ones doesn't have a digital display but it will work for there as well. This is just one is meant for TTL. All right, and then synchronizing it, I have it synchronized on the, the front of the shutter, or first shutter instead of rear shutter, mm -hmm. on front shutter. So that's something we really haven't talked about, but let's say, let's say somebody goes like this and moves like this with a slow shutter speed. You're gonna get that blur of them doing that, right? If you have it on rear, shutter and you use a slow shutter speed it'll be blur then the shutter will close and the strobes will fire up and then it'll be you'll see it so in other words if the flash will fire so it'll be blur plus flash get it yeah. we can do that later yeah, yeah. we have to. we gotta do it <laughs> we have to. we gotta right. do it and then um i have it on channel one right mm -hmm. so hold that against you somehow just a little bit so you see if it flashes and we'll see if this flashes a little bit you see a flash, see that yeah, flash, good. right? So they're both synchronized together. The only thing I did is on this one, I have it on channel B on that one. So if I wanted to go over to channel B, hit channel B right there, it's going to go to B. And if I want to boost the power of that one, I can easily do it from the camera. Uh, Get it? Do it all from the camera. Yeah, I can do it from the camera. So I could do it from over there, but I don't want to go over there, especially if he's holding it. I can go over there and I can change it from here and say, oh, I want more light on the background. Get it? Okay. Cool. I want a little bit on him. And then, Travis, what I want you to do is just come right over here and point that towards his ear. Okay. Point that towards his ear. Just as a starting point, right? So, um, and let's see what the ambient light exposure is here. Oh, I'm right on. Wow. It is. Ambient light is continuous light, right? But what's the, what color of the light is it going to be here? It's in the shade. Blue. blue, blue. So what the strobe will do, the strobe will take out that blue. So I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, since we don't, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna shoot a couple of them. The first three, I'm gonna shoot it with just ambient light, okay? Then the next three, I'll shoot it with the strobe and we'll see the difference when we go back in. Yeah. Oh, you are such a sexy beast. <laughs> okay, once again, I, I was laughing too much, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one second. It's, it's You're okay. It's good. About that. <laughs> okay, so now I've got it turned on again. And uh, as I have it turned on, um, I'm going to leave this exactly where it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit a test. And the very first exposure that you show is generally a uh, the flash talking to the camera. So it's generally a wasted exposure. And the reason why it's wasted is because it's synchronizing everything together. Does that make sense to you, right? So I usually just blow one off and I know I'm not gonna use that one. And then what I'll do is then the next ones, it will synchronize and it's ready to go. Okay. All right, so. Good. Oh my God, he broke the camera. I broke it. Yeah, see that crack right there? You cracked the lens. Let yeah. me go to channel B. I'm going to go up to B right there. See how the bracket's on B, right? 
instead of A, the bracket's on B right there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the energy and I'm gonna go up. Put on channel B, um, that's the one that Trevis is holding, and I put it 1.0, so it's one stop brighter than um, ambient light, right? So I made that one bright, but it's brighter. So this time, Trevis, it, uh, what I'm gonna have you do is bring it up, like down this way and feather it off that way. So this one should still be the same, but the background light one should be a little bit brighter. I'll shoot three that way. Oops, sorry. That's my what will be. Okay. So now, let's go back down again. Okay, so now we're back, back at, um, all back at zeros again. Let's go back to A. So it has even a channel C on it. So if I have another one of those, I could have it on channel C, A, B, and C, and I can adjust them independently from one another. Get it? Yeah, exposure. Okay, so we're at F22. I'm at 60th of a second at F22 out in the bright sun, okay? So let's bring him out in the bright sun. Okay. Right there. Alright. Yeah, and then, uh, um, so he, see how he's in the bright, see how he's in a bright sun right now and there's no shadows or anything like that? There's a little bit of a shadow right there, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna bring the light over. <laughs> so that's three in bright sunlight, right? So then this is the fill-in, right? The oh, fill-in, yeah. and then the background light gives me a little bit of a background light. Now, let's take this guy, and then as I put it right there, what this is doing now is that the light is going through the umbrella, and it's going to soften it up onto him, right? Okay? Because this is translucent. Right, it's translucent, so it's going to soften the light up. The other way is that I'll flip the umbrella around, it'll hit in the umbrella and come back to him as well. So that'll soften the light up even more. You following? From you see the hair that's on his light right uh, on his, on his, light. <laughs> on his <laughs> head right here. Yeah. And then Trevis is also going to, I'm going to have him point that light right to the middle of his back so it's going to light up the shoulders and yeah. the head up a little bit more. This time on this one, I want to do it like we're really gonna use it. So I wanna to go to a wide aperture because I wanna throw that background out of focus, right? Mm -hmm. So again, remember, this thing is, um, this, this one goes to uh, F4 is the widest aperture on this one. So I'm gonna go 60th of a second. Let's see what it says at F4. Let's see if it's too much light. So I needed to go up to 125th of a second to keep it at f4 why because it's too much light with the yeah there's, there's too much ambient light and i'm even at 100 iso and remember i want to keep that widest aperture so can i shoot at 125th yes because it synchronizes up to remember 250th of a second so a little bit more advanced but it's synchronizing up to 250th of a second so 125 is no big deal not a big deal in terms of exposure you okay Travis? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Yeah. So yeah. you can go down if you can get somebody with younger knees. Okay. First one is a junk one, so just for everything to get used to it, right? Okay. Yeah. Right, and then watch, I can go over here and bring it right there. Yeah. So now I'm not I'm not adjusting my aperture. I'm not changing anything on the camera. All I did was move the stroke, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. You can do a different pose. Perfect. Every single time. It's perfect. I'll show you in a minute. But perfect. So then, if I brought it closer, I'll bring it really close to him. 
then <laughs> think of other stuff. Oh, you're so pouty. <laughs> <laughs> I got a smile for it, so you got me. You got me, too. You got me. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, ambient light, throwing the background out of focus. I'm moving it anywhere I want to. And when I'm moving it anywhere I want to, now I'm getting perfect exposure every time. So, really, the only thing I'm having to do is compose, and I like the manual focus. And so, I'm manually focusing, and that's all I have to do. Everything is perfect every time. If I come back here, and I'm just going to, Travis, you don't need to get down. I just go back like this. It's going to be perfect again. Perfect, yeah, right? Yeah. If I go really close. I keep getting oh, character. Yeah, so. uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> perfect, right? I was perfect every With single time. With all this practice, he's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Overexposure compensation dial, the plus one, yes. the minus plus one. two, minus one, okay. minus two. Yeah. You could put it at ISO 50, and if it's still overexposed, you could go Think to minus lower. one and minus two oh, okay. and, and control the camera that yeah. way too. Yeah. So. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're okay. <laughs> so, but, but it, for example, when you put the, the stroke closer to him, you expect in the, in the picture that show more light or that adjust? It adjusts. Okay. It adjusts. So when I brought him really close to him yeah. on that last shot, it adjusted. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So like this kind of pose? Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. <laughs> Firing, right? Everything yeah. fired, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you can see, put more light on the top of his head. Oh, okay. And it did it perfectly. I don't even have to worry about it. It did it so perfectly because it's reading it as TTL, so it's reading the distance, right? Okay. So, no matter where I put that, it's doing its job. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Here you go, I want to, I want to share this with you. So I'm going to show you the easiest setup, the easiest lighting setup, and it works perfect every single time, okay? So I'm going to be, my, the photographer is going to be right here. So the photographer is right here shooting that subject. I put this one close to the photographer and up above the uh, model's head. Not the photographer's head, but the model's head. See how it's a little bit higher? than the model. Now I don't want to go too high because what it'll do, it'll create a shadow there or create a shadow underneath his nose. So I don't want to I don't want to go up too high because of that. I don't want to go down too low because it's not as interesting of light. Okay. So at this point right now with that on there you can see if he's looking this way, you can see that right here he's got what is called Rembrandt lighting. And the Rembrandt lighting is really a dramatic light. And Rembrandt, the painter, used to paint with that kind of a light. There was just one light source, a window, and the light would come through the window, and they'd just rotate the face until they got that light underneath there. But it's too dramatic for an everyday, like, corporate portrait or whatever. It's, it would be good for, you know, that guy that has the muscles on his stomach over there. That, that is Rembrandt lighting over there with the light underneath his eyes and you can see the rippleness on his stomach, sort of similar to what he's got right here. With a yeah. jacket. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm gonna do is that I'll take the light meter and what I'm noticing you guys doing is going like this or this or you know that kind of thing. I want the light meter like parallel to the person or to the product, those of you that are in my other class, and I want it so that the dome is heading towards the camera, okay. right? And then you'll get a better exposure like that that, that, or that, you're not gonna get a good exposure. You wanna have it pretty much straight on like that. So go ahead and fire, They're right there. So it says it's only at 2.8, um, at, at F2.8 at 100 ISO. So to me, um, it's okay, but this camera doesn't go to 2.8, but the widest it'll go to is F4, right? So I need to boost up the power here. I'm at seven. So I'm going to boost up the power to like nine, and then we'll do it again. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. So I'm at 5.6.6, so 5.6 and a half. Get it? Right? Now, if I wanted to get to that F4, what would I do? 
power it down, power it back down, right? So I went too far. I'm, I wanted to power it back down. So go ahead. It's at nine right now, Steve. Put it at, um, it's at eight. Yeah, put it at eight, please. There you go. So go, fire. Four. It says F4.7. Now, 0.7, that's a half a stop. Right, so it's a little bit on the uh, a little bit on the bright side. So if he went to like uh, you're at eight, go to seven point eight. Seven eight. Okay. So that go. So now it's four point oh point five. So go to seven point four. Are you following what I'm doing? Yes. Yeah, see how per see how I'm trying to perfect it, right? Okay. Go ahead. Fire. Perfect. Four point oh. Right. So I'm working with it because I'm working with it with the aperture I want to work with because I want that out of focus. I want that brick thing to be out of focus. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, now I want to add another light. So I've just done one light right now. I want to add another light. So when I add another light, what I'm going to do is I'll turn this guy on. And this guy is at a 45 degree angle to your subject. It's at a 45. Make sense? Right? So it's at a 45. It's been pointing down a little bit much to me, so I'm going to bring it up like that. And it's at a 45 degree to the subject. Now, I could come over here, and if I turn this off, which is probably easier to demonstrate, I turn that off. Now I'm going to read the light out of this one, OK? And the reason why I turned it off is because that could be affecting my exposure, right, from this light. So I want to see what the ratio is, okay? So we're going to go back over there. Okay, and now this time, it'd be silly to do it over here. Get it, right? So I'm going to do it on this side of his face, again, pointing towards the camera. So go. Up, oh, not on the right channel, right? So do you see how I problem solved it right away? And she's going to come over and she's going to put it on the right channel for me, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's on channel three. So I just go over there and I put it on channel one, right? And set it and I'm good to go. So I, I'm trying to make it so that you guys are comfortable and do problem solving. A lot of photography is problem solving. It really is. It's this like anything, I guess. It's problem solving. So go. So it's 1.4. Now 1.4 is at f4, it'd be f4, f2.8, f1.4. So it's two stops darker than that one. Are you seeing how I'm getting there by apertures? Okay, so you really have to sort of know your apertures in there. Or what I did when I first started working, I looked at the camera lens and I just said, okay, one, two, right? And that's one too, so I did it that way, or you just you could have even a little chart there. So it's a little bit darker than what I want it to be. So I'm gonna go up to six, which should give me one stop more. So fire. And almost 2.0. I want it to be 2.8. So I'm gonna go up to like let's go 6.7. Again. Perfect, 2.8. So now, this is F4, this is 2.8. It's one stop difference between them. This one's the brighter one, this one's the darker one. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yay. <laughs> Which makes me feel good that you get that because it's an interesting concept to think of it in terms of aperture, right? So this is F F4, which is brighter than this one over here. So now if I turn it on, turn this back on again, that's at 7.4. This is at 6.7. And the other thing you notice, my model's already tired, right? No, no I'm not tired. I'm just, I'm just saying I hardly ever use my model when I'm doing this. I, the model's resting, yeah. right? And I bring up a friend or I bring up a, another person or I'll just do it that way because I've used about a third of this energy already. You, uh, you, you I'm, 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 I'm perfectly fine. I know, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's like, so I want that energy there when I'm photographing. So now I'm going to put my aperture on the brightest light, which would be F4. Okay? So let's see what it looks like. Let's connect over here. It's got that pose going on, which is fine. Don't forget the pout. 
<laughs> Wait, one second. You, you got me, you got me November. You just got me, like, in a heartbeat. Just, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the one. I wanna work with. This one would be F8, right? Right. If I wanted more depth of field, that would be F16, that'd be F11, right? right? So all I'm doing is one stop difference between them. That's all I'm doing, okay? So I wanna do one more thing, and that is that I wanna turn on that, and what that will do is put a hair light on it and put some light on the background, okay? And then hopefully we can look at the difference between the yeah. two. Thank you. So now, now I'm adding this light, which is gonna do hair light, and also light up the background a little bit, okay? Then I'll put it in the computer and we'll look at the difference between the two. This, this. Can we look all of that way? Yeah. And, all right. And then, yeah. so that is. So that one is. Yeah, that one. So with that's the with the hair light. See the hair light on there, right? And see how it goes off, and you can also see that it lit up the background a little bit, right? Yeah. So then that one, and then uh, and then that one. So, yeah. um, you know, I kind of like it without the hair light on there. I think that yeah. these two lights are putting enough yeah. light on the brick that it looked bright and yeah, turn it down bright. a little too powerful. But, um, you know, if you look at all of these, you look at all of them, I mean, really, it's just perfect lighting. Um, you could do business you, portraits we, this way, real it, estate yeah, portraits, well. you know, anything. Mm -hmm. It just works. Um, the only issue with it is, of course, is that you need two studio lights, <laughs> you know, or like two of your pro photo lights, you could use those on top of there or the ones that I demonstrated today. So you could use any of those on there, but it is really very, very simple, perfect um, lighting. And even this one, you know, most corporate people probably would like that nice, even lighting, um, got a little bit of hair light on the back, but it's just such a typical portrait type lighting. And if you were to go to like Sears or Kmart or whatever, they have the lights exactly set up like this, but they're anchored down so nobody can change it, right? So that they don't even allow you to, like at uh, picture people or whatever, they don't even allow you to change the aperture or the f-stops, everything's locked down. And then the lights are locked down and then all it is is that you just shoot, shoot, shoot um, on that one shutter and that one aperture to make it, you know, work.